Ted Cruz. One of the smartest guys I've ever met. Ted, how are you, sir? Mark, I'm doing terrific. Senator Cruz, Ted, we talk about all these races and everything. You're up for re-election. I want you to explain yep. to my audience how tough this election is going to be for you. Well, we have an incredibly tough fight in the state of Texas. I'm up for re-election in 2024. Chuck Schumer has made clear that I am his number one target in the entire country, that the Democrats are targeting me more than any senator in the country to try to take out. My last re-election in 2018 was at the time the most expensive Senate race in U.S. history. We were outraised. We were outspent three to one. The Democrats flooded cash into the state of Texas. And what did they do with it? They more than doubled Democrat turnout. They took Democrat turnout in Texas from 1.8 million all the way up to 4 million. That has never happened before in the history of politics. We saw that. We leaned in aggressively and we drove Republican turnout from 2.8 million up to 4.2 million. But Mark, 0.2 was the whole margin. I won by 200,000 votes out of more than 8 million votes cast. It was a 2.6% margin. And given that, Schumer and the Democrats, they want to take me out. I'm leading the fight against their disastrous policies each and every day. And they're going to spend $100 million trying to, number one, take me out, and trying to, number two, flip Texas blue. And i got to say, if that happens... I, I think the country is lost if we ever lose Texas, and and they have set it as their number one priority this election in terms of in, in the Senate races. I honestly think, Senator Cruz, that's why the border's open. It's to flip Texas. Uh, because if they flip Texas, we can't win the presidency ever. And, of course, if they take you out uh, and they get a Democrat in there who pretends to be a moderate, they'll never be able to get rid of him either. So this is a huge election across the board. We focus a lot on the presidency, which is very, very crucial. But we have some huge elections out there, like yours, to me, is the number one when it comes to the House and the Senate. Are you going to get the kind of backing you need from uh, the Senate Republican leader and others who raise enormous sums of money through their political operations? Well, Mark, I don't know, but I can tell you in 2018, in that cycle, Mitch McConnell raised and spent about $300 million in Senate races. You know what he spent in Texas? Zero. Not a damn penny. Oh when I was in the middle of the most expensive Senate race in U.S. history, was out being outspent three to one, and we didn't have a penny of support. And, and look, people at home, you wonder how come you elect senators who don't end up being conservatives. This is part of the reason which is if you stand up and fight against the Washington cartel, against the swamp, they cut off your money and they want you to lose. And, and so what I've been supported from from the beginning, when I first ran, it was your listeners, Mark. I would go on your show when I was at 2% in the polls. No one thought we'd have a prayer. And, and you'd have me on the radio. We'd talk, and, and you would announce a Levin surge. And we would see your listeners come to our website, tedcruz.org, tedcruz.org, tedcruz.org. And it was without the support of your listeners, I would not have won in 2012 because all of, of the Washington swamp was against us. And, and that's still the reality. It's, it's, it's conservatives, it's patriots, it's men and women across the country who go online to tedcruz.org and give 25 for 50 or 100 bucks, and that is literally how we survived the onslaught of the far left. And by the way, America, tedcruz.org, we're going to put that link on all our social sites, on all our platforms. And uh, I think talk radio, Ted Cruz, is one of the most potent forces we have that's underutilized. Yes. I've tried to tell that to yes. a number of candidates who are running that. They have no idea because conservative talk radio, and honestly, especially this show and the, and the size of this show, people are very committed here. They don't want to lose the country, and they are huge Ted Cruz fans. So how do they raise their money? So the Democrats, they raise their money because, look, for, for the left, politics is a re religion. 
Listen, you and I have talked talked about this before. I think every person has a desire in their soul to live for something bigger than themselves, to have a purpose greater than their own material benefit in that moment. And and for most of human history, faith has has played that role. For you and me, faith is an important part of our life. It it it, it gives us a purpose in life uh, to to live according to our faith. Well, on the left. Politics is their faith. The Green New Deal is their faith. Radical environmentalism is their faith. And, and what ends up happening, we are getting outraised across the board where you look at my likely opponent is, is a Democrat congressman named Colin Allred. He's one of the most liberal members of Congress. His first four years in, in Congress, he voted 100 percent with Nancy Pelosi, not 99, not 98. Every single vote his first four years was with Pelosi. He's, he, his first 59 days in the race, he raised $6.1 million. He's raising over $100,000 a day. And listen, if you're, a, if you're a little leftist in Manhattan or Chicago or, or San Francisco, if you're a socialist, if you're an Antifa activist, you go online and you give 25 or 50 or 100 bucks. And on the conservative side of things, most conservatives, look, they care about politics in the country, but they also care about their business and their job and their church and their charity. And it's one of many things they do. And there's a difference because the left is obsessed with destroying this country. And and we need more Americans who love this country to rise up and defend it. And I got to say, your listeners are unique because I know the men and women who listen to you, they're committed, they're energized, they love freedom and the Constitution. Look, Mark, you and I are are good friends. One of the things I love about you, you are the most unlikely radio host on earth. You're a brilliant constitutional attorney who just says whatever the hell you think, and it's beautiful. But, But frankly, you shouldn't be a radio host, except for the fact that people desperately need to know what's going on. Yeah. I should have you on more often, Cruz. Uh, now, look, and by the way, you are welcome to come on more often. You have a hit podcast. By the way, if people want to hear you on that with my buddy Ferguson, where do they go? So it's Verdict with Ted Cruz. We do it three days a week. We do it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, we have every month just under a million unique listeners we are every week beating CNN. And, and I got to say, your listeners, look, they're listening to you, so they're getting serious legal and constitutional and political analysis. But between the 18,000 garbage Trump indictments and between the mounting evidence every day of Hunter Biden and Joe Biden's corruption, the corporate media doesn't cover any of that. And so what I do in my podcast is we walk through in detail. We walk through Here's the latest evidence. Here's what we know. Here's what it means. Here's why it matters. And people download the podcast, Verdict with Ted Cruz, because they listen in a half hour. They can understand, okay, what is the evidence that Joe Biden solicited and received millions of dollars of bribes from foreign nationals? And, And we try to just present smart, straightforward, legal, constitutional, political analysis and cover, frankly, what nobody, if you watch CNN, you will not know any of this. And and people go to the podcast or they listen to you, Mark, mm-hmm. because you can't get this information anywhere else. We don't have a lot of time left, Senator Cruz, Ted Cruz. So I have to ask you this. I don't mean to put you on the spot. I see Bill Barr out there. I listen to what he says and I shake my head. I say, this isn't the Bill Barr I know. So he's very disgruntled. He's out there. He sounds more and more like Chris Christie. He knows better than to say the things that he's saying, and he knows we're up against it in this country, that we cannot afford to lose the next election, whoever the Republican nominee is. Do you have any thoughts about that? Oh, look, I do. You and I are both friends with Bill Barr, and I like and respect him. I I wish he were not saying and doing what he's saying right now. And, And look, I get that he's pissed off. But but it's not helpful. If you disagree with Donald Trump, there's a way to express that, which is go and vote at the ballot box. But what the Democrats are doing right now, the, these indictments, our nation is more than 200 years old. We've never before indicted a president. We've never indicted a former president. We've never indicted a leading candidate for president. In less than a year, we've done it now four times. And these are radical Democrats bringing 
absolute BS charges. It's, they're garbage. But they're doing it because the Democrats, number one, hate Trump with all their might. And number two, they don't trust the voters. This is an assault on democracy. Everything the Democrats charge others are doing is what they do. The reason the Democrats are bringing these cases is they don't trust the voters. They think the voters might well vote for Trump, and they don't want that to happen. And so they're trying to bring these cases. Number one, they believe, and I think the data backs them up, every time they indict Trump, his numbers rise in the primary. And I think the Democrats want Trump to win the Republican primary because they think he's the easiest to build, beat. But I think they also believe that if he's the nominee, these indictments will hurt him badly in the general election. They want to see a criminal trial in September or October of next year. They want to make the whole election about their attacks on Donald Trump because they don't want to discuss Joe Biden's miserable, disastrous record. And, and it is, I think, the, one, the most cynical attack on democracy we've seen in our country. And, and I think this Georgia case is absolute garbage brought by a partisan Democrat DA who wants to make a name for herself. If you look at the, the – there are 161 overt acts charged in, in, this, in this indictment. Forty-three of them reference acts taken by Trump. Only 20, half of them, concern Georgia. And, and half of those are tweets. Now, Mark, explain to me how in the hell – is the sitting president of the United States tweeting a criminal offense? That, that, that is mm-hmm. bizarre. It is not law. It is the abuse of power by rabid partisans. Boy, beautifully put. Well, Ted Cruz, America, live in nights. Let's give him a hand. I know it's early. TedCruz.org, TedCruz.org. We're posting it on all my platforms, uh, and I'm encouraging you strongly to put your marker down now. I know most of you donate much later, but this would be a good time to do it. Uh, We can't lose Ted. There's just no way we could lose Ted. And plus, you can imagine the reaction if we do. We cannot allow this. Ted Cruz, God bless you, my brother. Mark, God bless you. Keep standing fearlessly up to the forces of darkness. Our country needs you. Well, you're very kind. You too, my friend.